Hey there. What's up? Welcome to the show. Okay, you guys bugged me and bugged me about doing a St. Patrick's Day video, so this is it. And I thought, corn, everybody's doing corned beef and cabbage, right? I didn't want to do that. So what I do, I looked up shepherd's pie. Not cottage pie. Cottage pie is with beef. This one's with lamb. This is shepherd's pie. So we're going to do that right now. There's a ton of ingredients. It's not hard to make, but there's a lot in it. So we even got... Oh, I'll show you. Come on in close. We even have... Look at this. You want to talk about getting Irish? We went to Kroger's and bought, I think it's Dubliner cheese, which is an Irish cheese. So we've got the lamb, the cheese, we've got the chives, we got the butter, we got the carrots, got the potatoes, we got the garlic, the salt and pepper. What is this? Uh, oh, sage. We got the sage, we got garlic powder. Oh my goodness. Keep it going. We got basil and oregano right here in containers. We got frozen peas. We got red wine, we got Guinness right here. We've got uh, beef bone, bone broth, got parsley, got Worcestershire, and we got cream cheese. Oh, and over here, don't forget the flour. And then way back here is an onion, see that? Right there's an onion. Okay guys, there's two steps to your shepherd's pie. One is a meat vegetable mix, and one is the potatoes that were over there in the pressure cooker. So we're gonna make our mashed potatoes in a minute. So we're gonna first work on the bottom part, okay? Then we'll shoot over and start the potatoes. But that's only gonna take us 10 minutes of pressure cooker, no time. You ready? First thing you're gonna do, just turn your pan on medium, medium high. Let's try that again. Hold on, ah, the fire, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, put your pan on medium high. And you take your lamb, you can put it in early, you don't have to wait for it to be piping hot. A lot of grease build up because lamb is like fatty like pork. So do me a favor, if once it's all brown, you're going to drain off all the oil and grease right now. So we're going to run this over to the sink real quick. Okay, this is where the fun begins. Got all the grease out, now we're going to start adding some of the vegetables, okay? And put the onions in. We're going to put our carrots in. The garlic, and the butter, right there. I'm going to push the butter off to the side so it'll melt quickly because we have no more oil in here. So I, I want to use that to saute the vegetables. Get it all mixed around. This whole process is just to soften the vegetables. If you look at this, it looks real plain, has no seasoning on it. We're going to throw a little salt and pepper on this. So grab your pepper, give it some flavor, just a little bit of salt. Not too much salt because you got butter that has salt in it. There you go. Keep working it. All right, next part, you're gonna add in your flour. Sprinkle it all around. This will really thicken up your meat. Later on when you have a sauce, it's gonna help too. Get that mixed in right away so that it doesn't clump up. It'll get a part of the meat and a part of the vegetables. The vegetables are doing great. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Now, as you notice, while I'm mixing, the flour is slowly getting incorporated with the other food pieces. It's starting to disappear completely. Make sure it's all good. It's all disappearing. Oh, you can smell the flour cooking. Okay, now once you got it all incorporated, this is the fun part. Now, I'm using a knot this this pan, nothing sticks to it, but your pan, you may have little bits at the bottom right now. You're going to want to deglaze the pan. So you grab your beer. Oops, that's not the beer. I'm sorry. So you grab your beer. 
We're using Guinness, obviously. Pour that in there. Grab your red wine. Pour that in there. Your beef broth. I'm using beef bone broth. Get that in there. And then you want to scrape the bottom. I know I don't have anything stuck to the bottom, but I'm going to slowly do it anyway. Just to make sure I'm not missing any goodness at the bottom. Okay? And you're going to let that simmer until it gets to a thick substance. So you're basically you're reducing the liquid. Oh, this smells so good. Okay, you know what? The recipe says don't do this, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm putting the flavors in now because I want them to get more incorporated than just a last minute dump. So I'm putting the Worcestershire sauce in. And I've taken my oregano, basil, and sage and put it in one bowl. So I'm going to put that in too. I'm taking a chance. I'm getting those flavors in early. Because I know the longer it cooks in there, the more flavor will get like into the meat and vegetables. So go ahead and reduce this. So you're going to lower your flame now. Get this mixed up first. And bring it to a simmer and then let it sit on low and simmering until this is all reduced to a, a thicker gravy. So we got all our potatoes in here. Rusted potatoes. Now you can boil them in a pot, you cut them into smaller cubes if you're doing that, okay? If you're doing a pressure cooker like I am, it only takes 10 minutes on high, okay? And then you want a quick release. Okay, we're going to throw that in there. I got my little steamer basket. I love this basket. Okay, get your cover on here. You want to use the pressure cooker cover. Lock it into place. Close your vent. Make sure it's all ready. Turn it on. We want 10 minutes. I want pressure and then we want 10 minutes there we go it's perfect and then hit start that's what it should look like look at this goodness we just got it to a simmer I just lowered it probably lowered it too much so bring the flame up just oh no it's good see those little bubbles that's a simmer you just want little bubble either on the outside or in the middle it doesn't matter as long as there's little tiny slow bubbles coming out that's a simmer and see this steam right here? That's what we're trying to do. Evaporate some of the liquid and make it thick. All right, so while this is thickening, we're gonna prepare our cutting board to start mixing our mashed potatoes. Let's go back over there. Okay, the potatoes just came out piping hot. Beautiful. So before we mash them, go preheat your oven to 350 because we're gonna be moving that next. Your mixture should be on the stove, thickening up beautifully. All right, so grab this bowl and get your potatoes mashed. All right, the key to making these mashed potatoes is keeping it hot. So the last ingredient is the milk. You don't want to cool off your potatoes. You want the potatoes to melt your cheeses. So let's get those in first. So don't forget, we had our Irish cheese. Okay, so I'm saving a little bit. I'll show you why later, okay? You want your butter. You want your cream cheese. You want your garlic. Love garlic. My mom raised me on this stuff. And then your herbs. You're going to do your parsley and your chives. Okay. Now, before you put the milk in to make it creamy, hold your plate and get everything incorporated. The heat will help you. Be careful. Take your time. All right, here's another tip for you. If you make a hole in the center of your mashed potatoes, that's where you pour your milk in and then you could fold it over, okay? So I want you to watch here. I'm just going to pour it right in the center. I got a little, a little well in the middle. Then you can gently bring in your mashed potatoes on top of it and then get it incorporated much better. If you need more milk, make them as creamy as you like it, okay? Don't put your milk in until the butter has completely melted in here. So we waited for the butter to melt and then we went with the milk. As you can see, we have beautiful, creamy 
amazing potatoes. Take this over to the stove and we'll show you the next step. All right guys, the last step is taking your defrosted frozen peas and putting them in the mixture. If you could see this mixture, it is so thick, it smells so good, I can't even explain myself. Incorporate the peas. Look at how thick the sauce is getting. All right, get the peas all around and you wanna only keep them maybe five minutes. They're fully cooked because they're frozen. They're, they're fully cooked, so just mix them in. Give it five minutes to heat the peas up. Okay. Scrape everything off the sides. Okay. Flatten everything because we're going to be adding the mashed potatoes next. You're going to want to grab yourself a spoon and add, la add a layer of mashed potatoes. Don't mix it in. Just top it. Okay? So you're going to have a, a layer of mashed potatoes floating on top of your mixture. Just like that. Beautiful. See how we flattened it? We got it smooth. It's the top layer right there. And the reason I said save some of your cheese for the end, you're gonna to wanna to sprinkle cheese on top. Okay, here's the finished product. Now we're gonna place this into the oven because it's an oven safe pan. Place this in the oven, 350 degrees, 20 to 30 minutes, or until you start to see a golden brown created on top. You ready? Okay guys, I don't, I don't know if you can imagine what this tastes like right now. We have so much goodness in those mashed potatoes on top. You started getting some of that gravy bubbling up on the sides. We brown the top with the cheese. This thing's ready to be dug into. Had you used ground beef, it would have been English and it would be called cottage pie. All right, let's grab some of this and try it out. It's still steaming. It's really hot. I cannot wait another moment. I must burn my mouth. Mmm. 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 It just gets getting better the more you chew it. Those are cheesy mashed potatoes. Those are amazing. I wish I could invite you over right now. All right, give this a try. You got plenty of time to go shopping before St. Patrick's Day, okay? Let me know what you think. I love you guys. Bye-bye.